Hi there, my name is Stephen Lungu. Um, I would like to share with you a story from the Bible. This is a wonderful story, When Heaven Stops for You. What do you do when heaven stops for you? And so often, people have never realized that many times God has been stopping for them. You know, one, you have that cry inside, and that cry, sometimes God stops for you, but you don't know it. And many people ignore that, that stop of, of God. Now, when Jesus stops, that means heaven has stopped for you. In Matthew, uh, in Mark chapter 10, from verse 46, there is a story of blind but mirrors. Then they came to Jericho. That's Jesus with his disciples. As Jesus and his disciples, together with a large crowd, were living in the city, blind men, but Mias, that is the son of Timaeus, was sitting by the roadside begging. When he heard that it was Jesus of Nazareth, he began to shout. It is the moment when he heard. It is that minute when you hear that there is this name of Jesus being shouted. You know, the name of Jesus does two things. You either love the name of Jesus or you hate it. Many people, when they hear the name of Jesus, they don't like it. It is a taboo. And some people use the name of Jesus as a swearing word. But, you know, this man, when he heard that it was Jesus of Nazareth, he began to shout. Now, why was this man shouting in the midst of that crowd? It was foolishness, really, to shout in the midst of a large crowd. It is like when Manchester United or Liverpool are playing a game, and you are in the midst of that crowd, and you start to shout in the midst of that big noise. I mean, who can hear you? But, you know, thank God that Jesus has that hearing, which in spite of the noise which is there, he can still hear that cry right deep. God will always pick up that crying heart, broken heart. And this man was shouting, Jesus, son of David, have mercy upon me. Now, it is always a desperate person who cries for mercy. But when everything is comfortable, everything is all right, you don't need mercy. But here this man was crying for mercy. And then the Bible says many rebuked him. They told him to be quiet. You shut up. You are making noise. Now, remember this. Uh, the people who were telling him to be quiet had eyes. They could see. They could move from point A to B. But this man, he was blind. He couldn't see anything. But, you know, he was so desperate that in spite of being told that to be quiet, he shouted all the more. He knew that this is my only chance, my only time. I may never find another chance with God. So this is my only time. Maybe people didn't want to take him to Jesus. But thank God, this man said, let me use my lungs to cry out. Jesus, son of David, have mercy upon me. You know, there's this verse which I like very much. If I were to ask many people around the world, which is the best verse in the Bible? Many people would tell me John 3, 16. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him may not perish but have it, eternal life. Yes, I love that verse very much. But for me, verse 49 in Mark chapter 10 is the most wonderful verse. Because verse 49, listen what it says in verse 49. When this man cried more for Jesus, the Bible says Jesus stopped. What a glorious moment. When Jesus stops, that means even heaven stops. When heaven stops for you, is waiting to hear from your mouth. What do you want me to do for you? That was the question Jesus asked this man. Now, when Jesus stopped, he didn't walk to where the blind man was. He stopped where he was. But then he says, call him. He's asking the blind man to come to him. Now, if I were Peter and John, I would have said, Jesus, this is very awkward. 
You need to go to where the blind man is, but you are asking the blind man to come to you. You know, when heaven stops for you, you have to do your part of going to Jesus. That's your action of taking yourself to Jesus. Heaven, Jesus, God has stopped for you. Now in this chapter, that when Jesus stopped, he calls the man to him. But when this blind man fumbles and comes to Jesus, and Jesus does another awkward thing, and he says, what do you want me to do for you? And if I were Peter again, I said, Jesus, this is too much. You see this man is blind? Please just heal him quickly. But Jesus doesn't do that. He asked him a question, what do you want me to do for you? And he just wanted that little confession from the lips of this man. Lord, I want to receive my sight. Admitting, confessing that I'm blind, I want to receive my sight. And Jesus, man, pronounces the most glorious words. Go, your faith has healed you. And then his eyes popped up. He could see, and the first person he sees is Jesus himself. Man, once you see Jesus, my brother, my sister, you are just unstoppable. The joy, the, 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 the peace inside you is so glorious because you have seen him, the King of kings, the Lord of lords. And imagine, just visualize this man when he sees Jesus. Now the Bible says he followed Jesus along the road. You could see him behind Jesus jumping and leaping because he had seen the king of kings. His eyes could see him. Not Peter, not John, but he saw Jesus. Have you ever seen Jesus this way? Have you ever had that personal encounter with Jesus Christ, king of kings and lord of lords? This man, when he saw Jesus, he was just unstoppable. And that's what happened with my life too. I was a gang leader, but the moment when I accepted Jesus as my savior and Lord of my life, I was never the same. And following day, I was less than 24 hours in the Lord. I started sharing my testimony in the bus. People thought I was mad, but I couldn't stop. I couldn't zip my mouth because I'd seen him who is invisible, the King of Kings, the Lord of Lords. And from there on, I went to the police to share my story and to confess all my life. And after eight hours, I was forgiven. And I couldn't stop going to the marketplaces, to the trains, the buses, sharing my story of what God had done for me. But now, remember this man who was but mere by the roadside? He had four problems. First problem, that he was blind. And second problem, that he depended upon someone to take him from point A to point B. And third pro problem was left by the roadside. Now, by the roadside, you don't participate. There's no involvement. You just sit and sit and sit looking for someone to give you the change from their pockets. You are desperate. And the fourth problem, that you are lonely by the roadside as a beggar. That was his problem. But now when he met with Jesus, man, this man was unstoppable. That life is over. My past is over. My sitting by the roadside is over. So many people, though they go to church, but their lives are sitting by the roadside. No participation, no involvement, no enthusiasm. But when you meet with the power of the Spirit of God upon your life, you will never be the same because you have met the King of Kings the Lord of Lords, the Savior, the Redeemer. Ma, what a glorious incident it was to meet with Jesus at this place. So I want to challenge you. If you have never met this Jesus, today can be your day where you can say, Jesus, come into my life. Change me. I need you into my life to, to be a man who will be full of enthusiasm and passionate for God to save him. And so... That's what happened with this man. He followed Jesus along the road. Now, it's so easy to come to Jesus. Anyone, even a child, can come to Jesus. But the toughest part, it is following Jesus. Because when you follow Christ, he says, carry the cross and follow me. It is not easy 
to follow Jesus. I don't promise, you know, a, a comfortable chair. But following Jesus is very tough. And I experienced it myself. And many Christians, it hasn't been easy. Following Jesus is carrying the cross. Because you are following him who carried the cross. May God bless you for you to make this decision for Christ today. That when you say, Jesus, I want to accept you and follow you. And when Jesus challenged people, he said to them, come, follow me. And then when he says come, it is a change of position. And then when you follow, it is to follow the master, the Lord, the leader, who is Jesus himself. May God bless you when you, when you are thinking of making a decision of following Jesus. God bless you.